Hi everyone, welcome to another video. Today we're gonna paint the zombie roach pattern and we're going all in on this one, so let's begin. Alright, so I got my blank here. Now I've chosen this blank from Lurbanks, this nice glide bait with a really good action. Uh, but the reason is this one is smooth, is no engraved scaling or anything because we don't want that because uh, we're gonna paint very detailed stuff on there and we don't want any uneven surface to interfere with that so that's why we want an even surface to do these kind of paint jobs now first of all we're gonna prepare our stencil and we're gonna use regular masking tape for this so you just take a piece put it on your lure and I'm just simply gonna draw out how I want the wounds to be like so that looks good so we're gonna keep a little piece of skin here it's like a little piece of flesh hanging on there it's gonna be cool I stuck mine to a cutting board now I'm taking my exacto knife so now we got our stencil and we're gonna put it on make sure you got everything in place where you want it to be now it's super important you don't throw away the negatives I let them sit here on the cutting board because we're gonna need those later on so don't throw these away alright so we start with some wicked red just to put a base layer of red on there now I have some wicked white in my smaller airbrush and we're going to paint the bones now So now we added some wicked red to our mixture and we got this very bright pink and now we're gonna color in between all the bones with a little bit of bright pink. Now it starts to look really fleshy. Okay so I got some wicked red again in my chamber and now we're gonna uh, paint some red lines and red texture in between uh, the bones but not against the bones, we want to leave that pink. Right, so now we got our reds done and we gave it some depth. So now we're gonna cover this up again. We saved those for later, so now we're gonna put those back onto the lure. So now we got our wounds covered. And now you can paint whatever pattern you want on there. I'm gonna do a roach pattern, but you can do a shad pattern, you can do a bass, you can do a pike, you can do, you can even do um, special patterns like you can even put a fire tiger or a redhead on there, and it's gonna look like a really cool zombie fire tiger um, with fish wounds underneath that uh, pattern. So. This, this is really fun, uh, you can do whatever you want, your imagination is the limit. Um, I'm gonna keep it not simple, because I'm, I'm gonna try to do a realistic road pattern, but um, it's, it's just gonna look very realistic and that's what I'm aiming for. But I think a fire tiger or something would be really cool to do once with this technique as well. So first I'm gonna do the body entirely black, and that's for the scales. But I'm gonna do also the tail. Now I'm gonna clear dip this afterwards, but um, I want the base to be a little bit black, and then I'm probably gonna to do the rest of the tail in red. So I'm gonna put my stencil on here now. Right, we got our stencil on. I got some wicked silver in my chamber now. I'm just simply gonna spray over our stencil now. I'm also taking some wicked detail moss green, make some 40 30 with that, and the scaling on a roach close to the head often has a little bit of a green darkish beginning, and I'm doing this in an angle from the back towards the front. Now I take some detail black magenta, and now we're gonna darken the back just as we did with the green, so only from the back to the front of the lure subtly spraying some black over there just to give it a little bit more depth in the beginning of those scales again 
Right, so we're gonna take our stencil off now. There we go. Very nice scaled roach pattern. Right, so now I got opaque white in my chamber and we're going to uh, whiten up the belly again and we're gonna whiten up a little higher because the belly white of a roach comes quite high and we're also gonna put some detail uh, back in our face again because that's entirely black so we're gonna use white first and then go over with it with silver afterwards so let's begin So now we appreciated everything, so I got some wicked silver in my chamber. I'm gonna go over that again. So I got some wicked detail moss green in my chamber. And we're gonna darken the top of the, the head again. Like so, make it look roachy again. So I also put some spots in there, so I pull the trigger twice and then shoot for paint and then it leaves some spots. Now I'm gonna take some candy 2 yellow. You know what? I'm gonna take it to kill a yellow. Alright, and I'm just gonna put a little bit of yellow on the end of the kill plates. So now we're gonna keep our to kill a yellow in our chamber. We're gonna add some blood red. Now we got a nice orange. We're also gonna dust just a little bit on the on the upper fin. Just to give it some color. Right, so now I'm gonna take a little bit of candy black and now we're going to shadow that little piece that is in between here we're gonna make that look separate from the rest of the body so we're gonna shadow the edges along the the whole piece we're also gonna put a little bit more structure in that now we're also gonna add a tiny little bit of shadow here and there around the wounds but very randomly like so. We're also gonna darken the back a little bit. Now it's time to remove our stencil. Now for the eyes I'm gonna paint these opaque white, nothing else, just totally opaque. And these are a little too small. And that is perfectly because I'm gonna make the eye socket black. So then it looks like these eyes have shrunken a little already and they're becoming smaller because they're drying out. So it's going to be cool. So we're going to paint these white. Right, so I got some Vallejo black in my chamber and we're just going to make those eye sockets totally black. So I also sprayed some red and some silver on the tail now. So when this is dry, we're going to clear dip this in Plastisol. Going to glue our eyes on. Trying to get it kind in the middle so you still see a little bit of black around the eye. Which is perfect like this. There we go guys, ready for clear coat. So guys, our lure is finished and I have to say it's really cool, it's really really cool, it's a very nice zombie like fish, it turned out great. There's also a nice depth in, in the wounds. Now if you want you can also add some, some blood, some red transparent paint flowing out of the, the wound itself if you want to have it more bloody. But uh, I like how it is right now, just big wounds that lifeless white eye with that black surrounding around it that is just a really cool glide bait I just tried to keep it simple so that a lot of people could do this at home with uh, not too much not too much skill uh, it's just a fun way to create this very unique and kind of zombie lure so also the shapes of the wound you can you can do them totally differently you can make them you can make them much more dynamic 
Um, so there's just a lot of stuff you can do. It is just let your fantasy go and uh, you let your imag imagination take over and yeah, just make something really cool out of it. As always, if there's something you want to see me paint, let me know in the comments down below. I will leave a link in the description below for all the materials that I used for this lure. Thank you guys for watching, I hope you learned something and see you next time. Bye bye!